What's up, guys? Eric here. It's Monday. That means it's time for another episode of the Multiverse Mega Video, the series where we talk about all of our favorite DC TV shows on the CW. We got three shows to talk about this week, a lot of exciting stuff happening. So let's just go ahead and jump into it. And careful for spoilers if you're not caught up with any of the shows this season. You've been warned, let's get into it. We're gonna kick it off by talking about Supergirl and their ratings. Now, Supergirl actually went up from the previous episode of 1.50 to 1.60, which is actually great uh, in terms of where the show is going for the rest of the season. I have a few nitpicks uh, with the show that I haven't had a chance to talk with you guys about. Hopefully this week I'll be able to get all that sorted out and we'll be able to talk a bit more about Supergirl as it will be going a little bit longer than the other shows. Uh, Flash and Arrow are both ending before Supergirl because Supergirl took that break for Legends to run for a few weeks. Uh, so Supergirl will run into, uh, you know, into the summer a bit. Uh, anyway, going from 1.50 million to 1.60 million is really good, heading in the right direction for Supergirl. Uh, let's talk about this week's episode. So this week's episode of Supergirl is titled Shelter from the Storm, and here's the synopsis. When Rain starts hunting Ruby, Supergirl and Alex work together to keep her safe. Supergirl and John look for Sam's mother for advice on how to stop Rain and come away with some shocking news. So we're going to be revisiting a character we met earlier this season, and that's Sam's mother. Now, I'm a little bit worried because we were told that Ruby was hiding in a place that she would be safe, and if she's hiding with Sam's mother, basically her grandmother, um, I don't really know how safe that actually is. That's not really hiding someone. She's literally with the next of kin. So I'm, I'm wondering if that's in fact what's going on here, because that seems like a huge oversight for Lena, considering how smart Lena is. This would just be like worst case scenario to put her with her next of kin. I'm not sure what kind of shocking news we could get from Sam's mother in this situation. We kind of already know the backstory of Rain and we know the backstory of Sam for the most part. So I'm not really sure what else we could find out here. And also Rain is now super powered because she has the power of both of the other world killers. So she's like rain plus one. She's like ultra rain. It's like, is this her final form? I don't know. She's like super powered now, like even more so than before. I'm so glad we're back to rain this season. It feels like an episode without rain isn't an episode worth watching. That's just my personal opinion. Rain is like the most interesting thing happening in season three of Supergirl. And I hate to say that because I was very excited about the Legion of Superheroes, but even though those characters could be really interesting, they're not really focused on that. They're focusing on side stories with like James and Lena and, you know, the Caramel stuff. Like, like they're just not focusing enough on those characters as individual characters from the future that could make it really interesting. But Rain, on the other hand, is super interesting. I love the stuff with Sam, the duality of her personality and the, uh, the mystery of actually how she was created on Krypton, which is really the only thing we haven't talked about. I don't think her mother knows anything about that. I'd be very surprised if she did. Um, maybe this is what's going to lead into them traveling and meeting Supergirl's mother. I know she's going to be in an upcoming episode, so that might be the shocking news. Now, the only upside to Rain having the powers of the other world killers is although she has their abilities, she doesn't have the teamwork aspect. So they're focusing on one character. This means Supergirl and the entire Legion and the DEO can focus on just Rain. Now, Rain is, like I said, super powered up right now. But she's only one person. So it's going to be interesting to see how they can use teamwork to defeat her. Because at this point, it's obvious Supergirl cannot go one-on-one -on -one against Rain. It's really weird to say that, but I feel like she's very outpowered by Rain in terms of just sheer power. So... Um, it's going to take teamwork. Now, for me personally, guys, I don't like to jump too far ahead and spoil myself. I might go ahead like one episode or two episodes to sort of give you guys information on anything that I find out that may be important to what's happening with the storyline. But in terms of like the shows, I know other channels go like sometimes three, four, five episodes ahead. Um, I don't like to do that. I like to be a little bit surprised with some of the things that's happening. I know that's crazy to say it, but I just do. Um, I'm kind of curious if Ruby is going to have powers, because if she is the biological daughter of Samantha, then I would think that her DNA would be slightly different from that of a normal human, considering that Samantha is a Kryptonian created person. So 
I, I don't know. We're going to have to see, but it's going to be, I'm kind of curious if Ruby is going to have some powers. Anyway, Supergirl hasn't really been impressing me too much over the last couple episodes. So I'm looking forward to this week's episode. I think this is more along the lines of what I personally prefer when watching Supergirl, but I want to know what you guys think. What are you most excited for in this episode of Supergirl? And what are you looking forward to leading towards the end of the season? I know I asked that in every Monday video, but as we watch each episode, some of those expectations change or we find out things that get revealed. And so it makes kind of a difference. Anyway, let me know in the comments below. Now let's talk about the Flash. Okay, let's talk numbers with the Flash because I know you guys love talking about numbers. I, I read the comment section. You guys love it. So the Flash came in at 1.74 million live viewers for Harry and the Harrisons, which is up from the previous episode. Therefore, she is, which was 1.70. So it went up slightly, sort of kind of in a holding position. Um, but again, it doesn't really matter with these shows because they all got renewed for another season. I'm just doing this because this is what we always do. And I know you guys like for me to talk about it. Um, I, I think the Flash uh, is, is suffering this season. We've talked about it a little bit. I want to do a more in-depth video, so hopefully I'll have a chance to do that. But I think there's a lot of reasons why the show's ratings are slipping, and it does have to do with quality of the storytelling. So this week's episode of The Flash is titled Think Fast, and here is a synopsis. When DeVoe assaults an Argus facility to complete his enlightenment machine, Barry realizes the only way he can stop him is if he allows Cisco and Caitlin to accompany him into the facility. Still shaken by Ralph's death, Barry isn't sure he wants to risk any more of his friends' lives and considers taking on DeVoe solo. So first, let's start off talking about the fact that John Diggle is guest starring in this episode, but it's actually supposedly DeVoe pretending to be John Diggle. Now, here's my thoughts on this, right? If DeVoe can shapeshift into anybody he wants to be, and he could be John Diggle, he could literally walk into Argus without any help from anybody. Matter of fact, he could shapeshift into anyone within Argus at any point in any time. Now, if we're talking about a facility that, that does not have meta dampening stuff, then he doesn't need to do this anyway. He could just literally show up and take them out without any trouble. So I'm assuming there are, there are meta dampening things in play here that would really make the only or be the only way this would make sense. Um, for Diggle to be DeVoe. Now, I don't know if it's been confirmed or not. Again, I don't like to spoil myself too far, but if DeVoe is impersonating Diggle, there's a lot of problems with this in terms of storytelling for me, unless there's a very specific reason why he's doing this. And I feel like there's, with all the powers he has, I, I can't really see any reason why he would do this. Now, another thing that really frustrates me after reading the synopsis and watching the trailer is the fact that Barry once again, we're going through this idea that Barry wants to do everything by himself and he doesn't need the help of his friends and stuff. Like, I just feel like this season, we are rehashing stuff that has already happened. We've already gone through this. Barry should realize that he can't take out DeVoe by himself and being worried about his friends on the team, like this whole thing with Ralph. I don't get it. I don't understand the connection. I... Maybe I'm lost here. Maybe I'm lost. But I even after watching this entire season, why is you know, Ralph, that important to Barry when we've had other characters we've met throughout the years that have been a much bigger part of the team throughout their season that would be way more important for Barry to worry about. We never seen him, you know, act like this before. So I think this is just, it's completely out of character for Barry and it's retreading paths that we've already taken in terms of his character development. So I'm not a big fan of that. However, regardless of whatever it says in the synopsis or whatever we see in the trailer, Cisco and Caitlin do go out in the field with Barry. So again, it is basically fake drama. <laughs> and I hate when they waste time in an episode doing that, when clearly you see that, you know, in the trailer and the promo shots, that they're going to end up working together anyway. I mean, do we really have any doubt that was what was going to happen? Um, I'm excited about seeing Caitlin using uh, the materials that uh, Amunet gave her because I do believe that's what's going to be happening here. Or maybe it's going to be like covert Caitlin, like super secret spy character. I'm not sure. I'm excited either way because this is like OG Team Flash, Cisco, Caitlin, uh, Barry. So I am looking forward to that. So I don't want to turn this into a rant against The Flash for this preview video, but I do want to talk about something here. One of the problems I've had with The Flash this season is the lack of mystery and the hit or miss storytelling that we've had. Like the only real mystery we have now for the end of the season is who the mystery girl is, that the speedster uh, girl that we've met. 
um, and what the language of the Speed Force is. That's really the only two things. And even the language isn't really that much of a mystery. I mean, it is, but it's we sort of understand that it does have something to do with DeVoe's plan and the future and the Speed Force. So it's not too much of a mystery. Um, so seeing an episode where we're going to get, you know, the OG Team Flash working together, um, it makes me a little bit more excited because I am, you know, I love these characters. So to me, it's great to see them all back together. Um, I'm just kind of, I'm, I'm curious how they're going to wrap up the season and where they're going to go with next season, because I think they're going to have to go back to the drawing board. This season was very hit or miss for me. And I know a lot of people will argue with me about that, but I feel like th that every other season of the flash, including season three had stronger episodes and stronger storytelling in a lot of ways. I think this season for me kind of just hasn't been there. So let me know in the comments below what you're thinking about this episode of the flash. And if you're excited to see the OG team flash, go up against DeVoe um, and dealing with the Argus facility. And what do you think is going on with Diggle? Do you guys think it's going to be a switcheroo or do you think it actually is Diggle? Let me know in the comments below. And let's wrap up this video by talking about Arrow and their ratings. They were at 1 million live viewers, which is actually down from the previous episode, which is at 1.10 million live viewers. Um, Arrow's having trouble. Um, I think the problem, and I'm going to do a separate video about this, I think the problem is the villains this season. I honestly believe Caden James was very weak. And I think Diaz, there's a lot of issues with that character. I love Kirk Avocito as that, you know, as an actor. And I think he's doing the best he can with the material he's given. And there's been some really good moments with Richard Dragon. But I think overall, there's some fundamental issues with both of those villains this season. And along with the problems with Team Arrow and new Team Arrow or fake Team Arrow as I like to call them. Um, anyway, let's talk about the finale. So the finale for season six of Arrow is titled Life Sentence, and it's directed by James Banford. So that's a positive. I love James Banford. I think he's an amazing director. Uh, but it's written by Wendy and Mark. So it's like, great director, and then Wendy and Mark wrote the episode. So we could either, I mean, this could go either direction, pretty much. And the synopsis is very simple. It says, with a new ally on his team, Oliver engages Diaz in an epic final battle. Okay, so let's go ahead and address the new ally and get that out of the way. It's the FBI. Okay, so Amanda Watson is going to be working with Oliver Queen. We know that last week's episode ended with him revealing to her that he was the Green Arrow, and then she said she wanted one more thing for him, and da 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 cliffhanger. Um, life sentence. It's probably going to end up... You know, she'll help him with taking care of Richard Dragon. In exchange, he will go to jail. That's pretty much how I feel this is going to go. Uh, just based on the title and the way they wrap things up in last week's episode and how we're supposedly starting out next season. So it just seems like it's all playing towards that. Um, so yeah, that's the, uh, the, that's the ally is the FBI and Samantha Watson. So being completely honest with you guys, I don't know what I want to see in this finale. I really don't. I talked about it just for a moment earlier when we were going over the numbers about the problem with the villains this season. And there's a lot of other small things and issues that I've had with Arrow this season. I feel like I've had issues with every single DC TV show on the CW this year, uh, with the exception of the first half of Supergirl season, I thought was really, really good. Um, and I thought Legends of Tomorrow was really good for almost every single episode. There's only a couple that I didn't like. However, Flash and Arrow have both really suffered, in my opinion. So in terms of what I'm expecting to see, I just want them to wrap everything up as tightly as it can be. No loose ends, if possible, um, heading out of this season and setting up next season. Another thing that's kind of a spoiler and then not really a spoiler, in my opinion, for us guys that actually hunt out information on the shows um, Paul Blackthorne, who plays Quentin Lance, posted on his Instagram, I believe it was Instagram is where I saw it, that he was going to be leaving the show, like, a couple of weeks ago. So, <laughs> the whole mystery of what was going to happen with his character and which person was actually going to get killed off at the end of the season sort of disappeared with that social media update. Well, he's going to be moving on to a series on NBC called The In Between, I believe is the title. You know, NBC, the channel that canceled... Constantine, who ended up coming to the CW. So it's all full circle, I guess, here. Um, I believe the series is a sort of supernatural crime drama, um, and he's got a pretty hefty role in it, much bigger than his role on uh, Arrow. So Paul Blackthorne is a character that I felt like has overstayed his welcome on the show. I love him as an actor, and I think he did an amazing job in the earlier seasons. But the last two seasons, they've kind of tried to find things for him to do, and it hasn't really worked out. Um, so he was probably offered a lot more money, maybe a new location to film in, 
and um, a change of pace for him. So he took a chance to do that. And I think Arrow will benefit from him leaving the show, not because he's not a great actor and his character didn't serve a purpose, but because his character was one of the character bloats where he was sort of like dead weight um, and he needed to go. So I'm happy to see him moving on. Don't like losing Paul, you know, from the show as in quality in terms of acting, but Quentin Lance has done as much as he can do and it's time for him to move on. Now let's talk a moment about James Banford. He is great with action directing. Like a lot of his action scenes from all the seasons that he's worked with Arrow, his episodes stand out as some of the better episodes in terms of handling fight choreography and you know um, stunt work, things like that. Uh, so I'm thinking that we're gonna have a really awesome, you know, probably more than uh, one set pieces where they do some sort of combat or some sort of fighting. So I am looking forward to that because I do like James as a director. and I think he does a great job with that. So hopefully he continues with that quality with his finale moving into next season where we're going to have a brand new showrunner and we have no idea what the show is going to be like at that point. So at the end of the day, whether you like this season or not, I'm probably one of the people that's on the fence in terms of the quality of the season. But whether you liked it or not, you have to be excited to see what's going to happen. Where are we going to go from here? Because supposedly next season, it's going to be a soft reboot to Arrow where we're going to get a different type of Oliver Queen working with, you know, Roy Harper and probably being on the run, I would think. And maybe the rest of Team Arrow is working in Star City by themselves without Oliver, which would be kind of interesting to have that split dynamic for the series. Um, so let me know in the comments below what you're looking forward to for the season finale of Arrow and what you think of the season as a whole right now. What are your feelings about it? And how do you feel about Richard Dragon being the big bad at the end of the season? Let me know about that in the comments below. With that being said, when it comes to our shows, that's pretty much all I got for you guys today in this video. Thank you for watching. Let me know in the comments below which show you're the most excited for seeing this week. Is it going to be Supergirl? Is it Flash? Is it Arrow? Are you excited about the Arrow finale? Leave all that hype down in the comments below. What about the departure of Paul Blackthorne? Do you think he's going to leave the show or do you think his character is going to get killed off? Because that is a huge debate in the fandom right now. Anyway, I wanna talk a moment about what's been going on with me. I saved it for the end of this video because I know that people aren't gonna, some people are just gonna watch those segments. They're not gonna watch here at the end. Um, so uh, if you guys didn't know, I had a family member in the hospital for a very long time. Um, at the beginning of January, uh, they were diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. By the end of January, beginning of February, they got really sick from something not related to that. They ended up in the hospital and I was the primary caretaker for the entire time. I was there every single day, multiple hours a day. You guys already know this if you've been watching my channel. Um, well, two weeks ago, uh, that person passed away and it really hit the family hard. Lots of tears, lots of sadness, lots of things to take care of. Uh, funeral arrangements, um, dealing with just everything that entails, you know, dealing with the estate stuff, dealing with any properties, with anything like that. We're still dealing with that now. Matter of fact, today I have several phone calls I have to make. And this week, hopefully, I will be able to wrap up a lot of that stuff uh, because it was quite a bit. And, you know, anytime you lose somebody in your family, whether it's a brother, sister, father, mother, uh, spouse, uncle, aunt, cousin, whatever it may be, it affects you pretty hard. Um, and for me, it did. I shut down for most of the last two weeks and I found it very hard for me to even do any of the stuff that I would normally do, which meant like watching my shows in a timely manner, getting reviews up. Um, just, I didn't feel like doing anything. Um, so this week I'm trying to get back in the groove and try to, you know, trying to feel like I can do the things that I normally do because I felt completely out of sorts for the last two weeks and my body actually was so exhausted from dealing with the hospital and taking care of this person um, who I cared immensely for, deeply for, and I would not trade it for anything. You know, I did it because I cared about them. Uh, it's always family first for me. And my body just shut down and said, you know what? You need to rest. You need some time off. So that happened and I kind of fell off the trap, you know, what do they say? Fall off the wagon. Well, that's for drinking. It's not an alcohol thing. Anyway, I got completely out of my element 
And so I've had to work my way back in. So hopefully this week is going to be that week. I can't make any promises, but I'm going to try really hard. And for everybody at Patreon that has been waiting for content over there, thank you guys so much. You didn't have to do that, but I do appreciate it. Hopefully you're watching this video and you understand what's been going on. Um, a lot of that stuff is just coming through the pipeline. I just have to sit down and get it done along with dealing with a lot of paperwork and estate stuff with this family member. So that's pretty much all the details I'm going to give. If you guys would like to reach out to me and have a personal conversation, you can, if not, just know that my family is very strong. We're trying to get through this. We're trying to work through this, uh, but it is very sad. So, um, anyway, thanks so much guys. I don't want to bring you down and <laughs> leave you on a bad note. I'm going to be fine. Okay. Don't worry about that. Um, and I'm excited for this week's episode. So hopefully you guys are too. Anyway, that's all I got for you guys today. Take care. Have a great day. Have a great week. And I will catch you later.